What's up everybody, welcome to today's video where we're going to talk about another XPG product. If you remember correctly, we did some video about the CyberCore 2 1300 watts uh, fully modular and uh, platinum power supply that I will be using in today's video. And of course, uh, Lancer DDR5 white memory sticks modules memory sticks modules however you want and the gamex s70 blade one terabyte gen 4 times 4 ssd but uh, since you already seen this i'm just going to place this on the side and going to talk about this today because i'm going to pair the levante x360 addressable rgb liquid cooling uh, solution with the battle cruiser case in full white Unfortunately, the Levante X isn't in white, but uh, I'm going to manage something to make it look interesting and for you guys to enjoy the sights of the build, of course. And definitely going to take this one for a spin to check out how does it perform comparing to other AIOs and giving some insights when we're talking about cooling an AMD processor, right? So before we go any further, let's talk about some specifications. So we have three addressable ARGB fans, which are low noise. We have quite interesting and redesigned mirror effect uh, pump block top. We have addressable RGB LEDs on all of those. So three fans and the block top uh, we have uh, all aluminum radiator, we have high quality low noise pump, which is Aztec, uh, I don't know which generation is it exactly, but it's stated here on the box it's Aztec, then we have hustle free installation, we'll check that out uh, definitely, and it supports LGA 1700 and AM5. In addition to everything, we have thickness of the radiator 27 millimeters, thickness of the fans 25 millimeters, the complete dimensions of the pump block top is uh, 50 times 72.5 times 72.5 millimeters. We have thermal grease already pre-applied, sleeved rubber tubes, aluminum radiator, three fan slots in terms of three 120 millimeter fans with fluid dynamic bearing, speeds going from 600 to 2000 RPMs. Uh, static pressure is 1.42 mm H2O, then we have airflow 61.5 CFM, fan noise at maximum fan speed is 34 decibels, which is for, I would say, 3 decibels higher than we're used to, but uh, we'll check that out. We have a connection type which is PWM and we have an external ARGB controller for the fans and water pump which is outstanding. Three vibrant dual ring 120mm ARGB fans which I already mentioned of course. And uh, let's check it out. So I, I really like to see how the pump design looks without the RGB because it's always interesting some of these ARGB products look outstanding even without the lights and that's something that I always like to uh, take into consideration when doing uh, videos because some of you want a cooling solution but it has a addressable RGB and you want to turn it off so you want to know as well how does it look which is quite normal right so let's see we have the pre-applied thermal paste it looks solid i think it would be quite enough to cover everything uh, extreme performance gear xpg right here written all uh, on the bottom part near the tubes the tubes are nicely braided which look really really clean and we have the mirror effect here on the top part the the complete uh, pump block top is some sort of a matte gray finish which i don't see anywhere else except for the pump and it can be removed completely so be very careful don't clean the bottom part so you don't uh, scratch it off and leave some additional stains or uh, i don't know scratch off the mirror effect which won't be uh, nice uh, after all well let's see here we go and uh, that's about it it has a splitter for ARGB heading out from the pump and you have four pin PWA header going uh, over there so basically what's left is to build this uh, PC and check out the specs and performance before we start I think the best uh, presentation would be to turn it on right so here we go 
Uh, it's a complete black and white build with uh, red uh, RGB, well, red lighting. And I know it doesn't matter when we're talking about the color scheme and when we're talking about the Levante X360, but just a little words up front before we go into details. So basically what happens when you place the Levante X360? So it's quite easy because the fans have a daisy chain possibility when we're talking about the RGB lights and when we're talking about PWM, which is outstanding. The pump also has, um, I think I mentioned that earlier in the video, also has a daisy chain possibility for the RGB lights. The PWM header is dedicated, so you do have to separate it from the fans, which is actually logical because you control the pump individually from the fans and that's the way to go. Now, everything else, the only thing that you need to have is a screwdriver so you could place the fans on the radiator and the radiator to the top part of the chassis and mounting it as such. Uh, in Battle Cruiser, I would suggest going with uh, something like Lancer DDR5 in terms of the height because in Battle Cruiser, you have limited space at the top and you do need to push the back fan a bit lower so the radiator can fit on top with the fans. That's all there is to it. That's all that you need to know. It's actually quite easy to place uh, the CPU block pump on the CPU because you have to use those plastic standoffs and the screws that you tied up with your hand. And after all, you can use the thumb screws to place the pump next to let me just do this so you can see the xpg logo quite nicely uh, you can use the thumb screws you have to use the thumb screws to uh, attach the pump block top to your processor that's it that's all there is to it the fans here on the chassis are controlled by the button on top and uh, you can connect these fans and the pump additionally to that or you can uh, connect them to the addressable RGB header on your motherboard or to the controller that you get inside this box. It's all up to you. So you have three possibilities to connect everything, which is outstanding because you either connect them to an XPG case, you either connect them to your motherboard, or if you don't have addressable RGB on your motherboard, you can connect them directly to the controller inside. Now, I think it's time for the thermals and uh, performance uh, when we're talking about the AMD Ryzen 5 7600X because the results are quite interesting, uh, as always, I don't have to deny that. And uh, AIDA64 Extreme Edition with everything that needs to be ticked was ticked. The thermals on the processor went up to 88 degrees Celsius and the clock speed went up to 5450 megahertz, which is quite outstanding. Now switching to Cinebench R23, we got a couple of, um, as always, and as you've seen in, in the latest uh, reviews, I do 10 benchmarks, uh, 10 uh, consecutive runs of Cinebench R23 to see the results and uh, how it will be when we're talking about stability and um, continuity. So the clock speed of the processor went up to 5275 megahertz, the temperature went up to 87 degrees Celsius and uh, then we have as per usual we have a rise in performance when we're talking about uh, Cinebench score. So it starts with 14641, immediately the next test uh, jumps over 700s which is uh, quite outstanding. And then we were really close to 14,800, but it stopped at 14,798. And then it circulated almost everything above 14,700, which is outstanding basically because it keeps the con um, consistency, I would say, with the benchmark in Cinebench R23, which means the Levante X360 with Acetec pump is cooling quite nicely. The good thing is it doesn't get that loud as it states as 34 decibels. So it really does perform quite nicely with lower, I would say, lower um, decibel range, right? So it could go even higher if you crank up the speed, the RPMs of the fans and the pump 
on the Levante X360. I usually want to leave everything stock and to give the mo motherboard the choice to decide uh, what is the ideal RPMs, even though sometimes I do run on 100% uh, everything so that you get an idea on how it performs. But this time I left it as it is just because I wanted to see how the fans here on the case perform with the whole thing running all together. And it was quite nice. I would say it was quite nice. So today basically what we had is a white XPG Battlecruiser case with Cybercore 2 1300 watts, which has a dedicated 12 VHPWR cable. Then we have Lancer DDR5 in white as well, no RGB this time. And I think that's quite all right. I wouldn't complain uh, with or without RGB as long as the heat sinks look nice. And they do in this case. And finally, the star of the show, which we have right here, the XPG Levante X360 with three quite interesting fans when we're talking about the blades because they have a different, um, I would say, blades in terms of um, creating airflow and air pressure through the radiator and giving nice exhaust uh, at the top. And finally, the pump block top, which looks outstanding with the XPG logo as a mirror effect and looks quite nice, doesn't it? Especially if you run it in some uh, RGB madness, if you wish to do so, or if you go with a static color like I did to match the red from, of course, uh, XPG and the white black going all in terms uh, so it can fit a proper color scheme, not custom build or anything similar to that, but a color scheme. That's it. My definite suggestion on Levante X360, they did outperform their past uh, AAO with Levante uh, 360, so without the X, and that's all there is to it. I'll put the link uh, actually for all XPG products, but Levante X360 is going to be on top, uh, so because we are talking about the Levante X360 today, and uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Hope uh, that this gives you some more insights about the XPG products and how they're forwarding and going, well, basically going forward with the quality and cooling and altogether what you can expect from them. Finally, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button and notification bell uh, so you don't miss any future content, uh, which will definitely include XPG. Thank you for watching. See you soon. Bye-bye.